I think uh, a lot of young men fight pornography and they excuse it. Mm. In other words, you're going to hell mm. if you don't repent. You, you are showing that you're not even a true believer. Mm. And then he says, and if your right hand makes you stumble, that, that goes even further. Now you're not just looking, now you're fondling. So that is why purity is absolutely essential. What if I told you I knew what happened to Steve Lawson and why? Many of you know Steve Lawson has been stripped of, of his ministry. He's no longer the pastor because of some sort of inappropriate relationship with a woman, an affair, who knows what it was. But uh, he's been taken down because of that particular sin, lost a lot because of it. He's not the only one. There's other folks that have fallen. Uh, you think about Tony Evans. Now, we don't know exactly what it was, but he said it was a past sin and apparently something he still has to deal with or repent of or not totally sure, but I know what happened. I'll tell you, I'll tell you in just a second, but before we do that, I want to go back and look at something that Steve Lawson said. And a lot of what he said makes sense. Now there's something I'm going to disagree with in just a second though, but let's look at something that he did with um, Kirby from Off the Curve Ministries and listen to what he said. Now, let's just be honest, this particular discussion, even though some time ago, uh, it really didn't age well. It doesn't look right now. Uh, it begins with their own personal heart and their walk with the Lord. And um, you really, you've got to be a godly man. And there are a lot of young men who want to go into the ministry who are trying to be as much like the world as they can be, and they need to be as much like heaven as they can be. And so it really begins with their own personal character and the integrity of their life. And it begins with the Word of God in their life. Uh, Psalm 119 verse 9 says, How shall a young man keep his way pure? by keeping it according to your word. Then verse 11, your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. What he says so far makes perfectly good sense. Matter of fact, it's true. Uh, you want to keep your heart pure. You want to keep your mind pure. You want to keep it focused and stayed on him. The question is, how does that happen? Now, before we get to all these things, uh, there's something he's getting ready to say that I'm going to disagree with a little bit and it points to why these things keep happening. So for men going into the ministry, that involves you must master the Word of God, but more than that, the Word of God must master you. And you must be sanctified by the Word of God. God will only use one kind of a vessel, mm. and that is a pure and holy vessel. Mm. And the Holy Spirit will only fill a holy life. Mm. And the Holy Scriptures will only go, go forth with power mm. from a holy life. Now, I understand what he's saying. And he's saying that he, the Holy Spirit or God will only use one kind of a vessel. Herein, herein lies the problem. This is why someone like a Steve Lawson failed. I know exactly. I know it intimately because it's something that happened to me. Now, thankfully for me, mine was differently. Mine is happening before if that happens, if it happens to be the case that I actually do become uh, a pastor, a senior pastor. Um, mine happens before... Uh, versus his happening during causing his to possibly end. Now, in terms of can he ever be rest restored and so forth, the possibility is there. Will it happen? Not sure, because it, it varies from person to person. But he makes a statement stating that it can only be uh, a person has to be, or he's only going to use a certain kind of vessel, a pure vessel, a holy vessel. Therein lies the problem. This is something that Paul says. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, he says, Therefore, let him who thinks he stand take heed that he does not fall. The reason why that's important, take heed lest you fall, because oftentimes, every time that a man falls, what has happened is, and I mean someone who's been in a, in a position of leadership in the, in the body, what happens is they get things a little bit twisted. They begin to feel themselves. They think that they are steady. They think that they are firm on solid ground. Sometimes it's because of the the applause, the accolades, and so forth, the the hand clapping, the pat on the back, people telling them how great they are. And you begin to read your own press clippings. You begin to buy into it. You think that you know the word well enough. People have clapped. Some lives may have been changed. You think it's because of you, not necessarily the Holy Spirit. You know it's the Holy Spirit, but part of you thinks that yeah, you know what. I'm being used to deliver it in a certain way, so God is really using me. And so you end up shifting a little bit of limelight off of him onto you. Here's a spotlight. The word of God 
is in it and then you start inching over into the spotlight a little bit and getting some of the shine and you feel it not necessarily you, you, you're going around thinking that or acting that way but something inside lets you makes you feel as though you've kind of not arrived but you're closer than most it, it, it happens every time that is the reason because the only way that you can get caught up in a particular sin is if you not if you're not aware of yourself possibly being caught up in the sin now remember jesus makes a statement to peter in luke 22 he says simon simon behold satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat but i prayed for you that your faith may not fail and once and when once you have returned again strengthen your brothers peter is the guy who says no 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 as a matter of fact look what he says he says he says lord with you I'm ready to go to prison and to death. And he said, I say to you, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied me three times. So what happened was Peter got a little too full of himself, thought that maybe he was the man because he was treated a certain way, a little bit, maybe a little bit differently than the others. Remember, he was part of the inner circle. He was uh, one of the three amongst the 12 amongst the other disciples. And so he's beginning to fill himself and his confidence shows I'll go to death with you. I'll go to prison. No, nothing's going to separate. No, 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 Lord. I'm going to all, they might leave you, but I won't. Peter didn't understand what Paul is going to say later. Take heed. If you think you stand, take heed lest you fall. And so Jesus says, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. Peter finally gets, as a matter of fact, so much so that he goes on and says in 1 Peter 5, he says, be of, be of sober spirit, be alert, be on guard. Uh, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Well, what do lions do? They look for the ones that's off by himself or the weak ones. But just be off by yourself because either you don't know any better or maybe you think that uh, you're okay and you're not. You are never okay. You are never uh, in a place where you can take care of yourself. And so sometimes these men, they go off on these trips. They take they go to these different conferences. Um they used to take their wives and they take their wives. They do these different meetings here and there and their wives aren't present. And so anything can happen. It doesn't happen while they're in the pulpit. It doesn't happen while they're in Bible study. It doesn't happen while they're in prayer. It doesn't happen while they're studying. No, it happens when they have left, when they moved away. What happened with David when he was supposed to be doing what he was supposed to do? The time that kings go off to war, what does he do? Nah, I'll stick. I'll sit this one out. And his mind that should have been preoccupied on the word of God is no longer preoccupied on the word of God or what God, God's will or what he wants me to do. Now his mind is idle and he has an opportunity to look and think about the flesh. Think about what he's seeing. Hmm. That tends to happen. Oftentimes the devil didn't come up to you with a loud ringing bell and a sign and the sirens going off saying, hey, here comes sin. Here comes temptation. Here comes something that's going to cause you to fall. As a matter of fact, when you see it, ah, no big deal. That's how the enemy works. A lion does not come uh, and, and, and make himself known prior to coming up to his prey. No, he sneaks up. That's how the enemy is. And what ends up happening is we do things that allow for sin to come in. Paul makes a statement. Look at this. He says in first, I'm mean, starting Romans 13, I start in verse 11. He says, do this, knowing the time that is already at the hour for you to awaken from, from sleep. For now, salvation is near to us than we believe. The night is almost gone and the day is near. Therefore, let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave properly as in the day. Act as though this is it, that we've only got a few minutes left. Act in that manner, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy. Look what he says, and here's the key. But put on the armor of Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regards to its lust. What does that mean? Well, you know what? I, I want to be pure. I'm a single man or single woman. I want to be pure. I'm, I'm a single young lady. Uh, I'm pure. The, the, I, I, I've kept myself. I want to stay strong. But we're going out on a date. Let me just in case, just in case, let me stop and, and, and pick up some uh, some protection, some condoms, just in case something happens. What are you doing? You're making provision for the flesh. You're making provision for sin. Just in case. I don't think it's going to happen, but just in case, better safe than sorry. Well, no. Remember, take heed lest you fall. You are not that strong. You are not, you are not as tough or as godly or as holy as you think you are. And so what he stated, what uh, Lawson stated, is not necessarily true. When you think that you're holy, when you think that you've arrived, that's when you someone ought to pull you back and say, no, you're not. That's when someone ought, ought, ought to let you know that 
hey, your defenses are down. Your backside is showing. You've got something. You've got some areas of weakness and you're not as stable as you think you are. And so what ends up happening is you end up going before the Lord in all sorts of ways. So what is going to do? He's going to lay you bare. He's going to open you up. In some cases, he might even kill you. Think about the, the two the two sons of Aaron who go before the Lord in an unworthy manner and they were destroyed. And what does what is Aaron's um what is his message for Aaron that's given to him by Moses from God? He said, um, by those who come near to me, that's come near, approach God, I will be treated or regarded as holy. And before the people, I will be honored. When you don't do that, you, not God or his word, you will be destroyed. You will be laid down. You will be disciplined. Prayerfully, your discipline is not like that where you die, but it could happen. And so what happened with Steve Lawson? Whatever it was that happened with Tony Evans, whatever it was that happened with any other preacher, whatever it was that happened with me, this is where you get arrogant, prideful. You don't think it at the time, but you look back. Yep, uh, I thought that I was able to. I thought I was more than what I was. And the focus ends up being more on you, Corey Miner or Steve Lawson or Tony Evans or whomever it is. The focus is on you because every sin that you do, if you are a true believer, it's a sin that you never would have thought that you would have done previously. Ask the person who's in prison. Was there a time where they would have thought I never would have done the very thing that I did to get here? There was a time where the robber never would have thought that he would have robbed. The killer never would have thought that he would have ever killed and so forth. The same thing with a Steve Lawson. There was a time that he never would have contemplated doing what he did or Tony Evans, whatever his sin was, or me, whatever, whatever my thousands of sins were never would have contemplated. But what happened was because I thought I wouldn't do it. I thought I, I it couldn't happen to me. It's, it's the reason why it did happen to me. And what's the lesson in this? You don't think that you are more than what you are. Therefore, no one can ever come back and show you a video of what you're saying and you not living up to it. Now, there's going to be some truths that you have that you're just not going to live up to all the time. And so the best way to handle that is, as he says, to regard his, his word hide it in your heart that you don't sin against and do that every day. Make it a daily practice. Don't neglect the day because the day that you neglect it is a day that the enemy began, can begin to make some inroads in bringing you down. Why? Because he's not just after you. He's after tarnishing the message of Christ. So that's the reason why nothing earth shattering, nothing news breaking. Do I know the name of the person or what all happened? No, it's not important because this is, this is done thousands of times every day uh, amongst non-believers amongst even believers, even those people that are in the pulpit, these things happen because you take your eye off Christ and think that you are helping yourself to stand. Again, as Paul says, if any man thinks he stands, take heed lest you fall.